Good morning, River Heights. How are we doing today? <laughs> it's a great day today. <clears throat> it's a fantastic day today. Nice and hot, toasty. Don't you love it when that happens? Ah, yes. It's great. It's wonderful. But yeah, it's a nice day. Just going to be hot. Really hot. So stay cool today. Drink lots of fluids. Drink lots of waters. All that good stuff. So anyway, um, yeah. <clears throat> let's uh, let's pray, and then we'll get this shindig started. So, Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. We just say thank you for a day, a great day. It's a great Monday. Um, God, teach us today. Show us some new stuff. Lord, help us to just understand more and more about who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So it is good to see everybody here this morning. I am just getting started here. I think I'll be able to see the comments. I'm not too sure. So I don't need to see myself. I know what I look like. Ah, here we go. Morning, Sue. All right. We got some people coming in. That's good. Very good. All right. So uh, this morning, just wanted to, to talk about uh, cornerstones. Um, I know that uh, way back in the day, <clears throat> I first started going to church. I think I was about four. My mom can probably attest to some of this, but... Um, but it was when bus ministries were big and we were, we were attending a bigger church and it was a huge outreach uh, to bring kids into the church. Um, and we had, good morning, Miranda. And we had a ton, a ton of kids coming to church, but I was one of those kids. I would get picked up in a bus and take, taken to church. Um, I remember my bus drivers, Bo and Whitey. Oh my gosh, they were such great guys. They were old, a couple of older guys, old, you know, old guys, like grandpas almost. Um, and they drove me to church, let me hear about Jesus, uh, and then took me home. And it was, it was fantastic. Uh, my mom went with me on Sunday mornings. That's how I started going to church. And it was great. Man, I, I just re I remember that. I don't know why I remember that. But the thing about it is uh, that was my cornerstone. And this morning, I just want us to think about and remember um, maybe when we made or when you made Jesus your cornerstone. And maybe he's not your cornerstone right now. Maybe something else has replaced that or there is something there um, that maybe Jesus needs to replace. Um, to be your cornerstone because when you build a building you kind of start in the corner and you work your way out um, trellises are built um, from the corner to corner and then they put up beams to make it sturdy in the middle but you got to have firm corners uh, to build on a firm foundation and so I just want to read a little bit uh, from Luke chapter 20 it's the parable of the evil farmers. And, um, you know, sometimes we skip over these uh, these parables because they're not the funnest to read, you know. But um, it's a very interesting one because it's um, actually foretold in Psalm 118, uh, 22. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but I want to read it. I want to start reading it. And start. it's Luke chapter 20, starting in verse 9. He says, now Jesus turned to the people again and told them this story. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to the tenant farmers, and moved to another country to live for several years. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent one of his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers attacked the servant, beat him up, and sent him back empty-handed. So the owner sent another servant. But they also insulted him, beat him up, and sent him away empty-handed. A third man was sent. Now you think you'd get the picture by now, right? A third man was sent, and they wounded him and chased him away. What will I do, the owner asked himself. 
I know. I'm going to send my cherished son. Surely they will respect him because he's, well, why wouldn't they? Because he's a part of him, right? But when the tenant farmers saw his son, they, they said to each other, hey, here comes the heir to this estate. Let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they dragged him out of the vineyard and murdered him. What do you suppose the owner of the vineyard will do to them? Jesus asked. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, he will come and kill those farmers and lease the vineyard to others. How terrible that such a thing should ever happen, his listeners protested. And Jesus looked at them and said, then what does this scripture mean? Here's what it means. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Everyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone it falls on. Good morning, Denise. Ah. The teachers of, rel of religious law and the leading priests wanted to arrest Jesus immediately because they realized he was telling the story against them. They were the wicked farmers, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. They are the wicked farmers. And Psalm 118 verse 22 says, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is a fulfillment of that. When Jesus dies, he is rejected. The, the founders, not the founders, the uh, Pharisees and religious leaders rejected Jesus. And when they rejected him, he they rejected the cornerstone. They rejected everything about Jesus. And they rejected him and replaced him with law, with their religious laws. There are 600 and some odd religious laws. And Jesus is the cornerstone. And Jesus wants to be the cornerstone of everyone's life. Um, he wants that foundation, uh, your, the foundation of your life to be built on him. And he wants to be that cornerstone. And maybe you don't remember the day or the time or the place uh, or the date that you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, I think I was about 10 years old, give or take. Uh, my mom came on the side of my bed and talked to me about it, and it was great. It was, you know, I, I then got baptized when I was 12. So what what is your cornerstone? Who or what is your cornerstone? Sometimes I have to rethink that. And as I was reading that this in my quiet time, I just went, oh, man, cornerstone. Have I replaced Jesus as replaced Jesus with something else as a cornerstone in my life? And I just, sometimes I just have to repent and say, oh my goodness, what have I done? What have I done? And so I just, you repent and you say, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, Jesus, for what I've done. Jesus is the cornerstone. He should be the cornerstone of our lives. And I just want to encourage you right now, maybe there is something there in place of that, that, you know, the cornerstone cannot be, you know, or the cornerstone is something else. Um, but God loves you. God cares for you. He cares for all of us and loves us. I just want to pray for us this morning. Um, it's kind of a downer scripture, but at the same time, Jesus is the cornerstone and he encourages us to seek after him and love him. Um, and he loves us no matter what. He cares for us no matter what. So let me pray for us. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. We just say thank you for being our cornerstone, our rock. Thank you for loving us no matter what. God, you are an amazing God and we just thank you for who you are. Bless my friends, God. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, it was great to hang out with you this morning. Short, sweet, and to the point. But man, 
Enjoy your Monday. Enjoy your week. It's going to be about 78 degrees on Saturday. So enjoy your week. Have fun. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.